Hello everyone and welcome back to the AWS RDS demo. I hope you have already uh, seen the tutorial that we had for Amazon AWS RDS. And if you haven't, then please go and watch that before coming out of the demo. Or if you just want to watch the demo, then you can proceed further with this video. And uh, that's it. Let's start with the demo then. So this is the management console that we have for AWS. So here you need to just find RDS and you can just go ahead and click on this one. And once you have clicked on this, we will get the page for the RDS uh, to create our RDS uh, database. So here you can see uh, the options that we have for Amazon Aurora as well to create the Amazon Aurora database. And here the create database option that you see here, this is for the RDS database. So if you wish to create the Amazon Aurora database, you can click here and go ahead with this. Well, for now, what we are going to do is we are going to create the RDS uh, database. Uh, so we will click on this option. And uh, as you can see here, the service health that you have, the Amazon Relational Database Service for Mumbai, its service is operating normally. So it's a good sign for us because we are going to create a database. If it was unhealthy, then we will not be able to create the database for now. Uh, so this is a good thing. So we'll just click on create database. So once you've uh, clicked on create database, you will get two options. So choose the database creation method. So here there are two options that are available to us. The first one is the standard create and the easy create is the second option that we have. So for the standard create, it gives us the flexibility to customize the database creation process as per our demands. So you set all of the configuration options, including ones for availability, security, backups and maintenance. And for the easy create, it's like a easy setup that we have for the installation process for any of the software that we used to have, like in Windows or Mac. So it'll just go ahead and what do you say, do the best practice and configuration that we have and it'll uh, create the database for us. So use recommended best practice configurations. Some configuration option can be changed after the database is created. So uh, we want to see all the options that we have for creating the RDS database. So we will choose standard create. And the second option that you have here, the engine option. So engine options are basically the sought after database engines that we have, like the Amazon Aurora. This is the new one that Amazon provides, the MySQL and the MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle, and the Microsoft SQL Server. So based on your requirement, you can go ahead and create a Postgres or a MySQL or a MariaDB or a Oracle or a Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, database and uh, for today's demo we will be going with Postgres and uh, this is the version current version that we want and one more thing that you need to remember is Amazon Aurora is not included in the free tier and apart from that you can create any other database that you want okay so if you want to create Postgres SQL 12 in the preview environment click here but I want to just uh, use this version for now and uh, there are templates also you can choose like let's suppose you're working in a production environment or a dev instance then you can choose one of these templates but we are a bit low on budget so we'll go with the free tier one so i'll click on free tier but uh, remember that you have all these options in place when you're working for your organization and your organization wants to have a database for the production environment or the dev instance you can choose one of them as a primary template that you have Okay, so the free tier actually use RDS free tier to develop new application, test existing applications or gain hands on experience with Amazon RDS. So that's what we want to do. And that's the best option that we have here, the free tier. So we have selected this. So moving on the settings, we can provide a name for the database that we have the DB instance identifier. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to name it my Postgres DB. And uh, the master username that I want to set is uh, admin and i don't want to generate a password automatically so i would not select this option of auto generate a password i will just give something like a simple one okay so i've given the password you can also choose one of the passwords that you like and you can give it as well so the next thing that you have here the db instance size so choose a db instance class that meets your processing power and memory requirements the db instance class options below are limited to those supported by the engine that you selected above okay so based on the engine type that you have selected like uh, it might be postgres or mysql or mariadb you get to choose one of these and you can see these options like standard class and memory optimized classes have been grayed out this is because you have chose a free tier option for creating the database so if you choose production or dev instance then you might as well 
go ahead with uh, this two options low so you will get uh, what to say these two options will be unable for you so the worst of all class this is the only class that i have uh, for now if i click on this drop down this is the only option that is available so db.t2.micro is the only thing that is available for us in the free tier and we are restricted to this so we will go ahead and choose this but if suppose i want to re reiterate this once again so let's suppose you have a production environment uh, template or a database or is a dev instance uh, template then you can go ahead and choose one of these okay based on your requirement so now we will go ahead and select db.t2.micro next one that we have here is a storage so you can select a storage type so with here you get the two options that we have already discussed like uh, rds provides two storage type options that is one is the general purpose ssd and the provisioned iops ssd so now we can just go ahead and select the general purpose ssd for now and the minimum and what do you say storage capacity that you can allocate is 20 gb so we have allocated 20 gb and that should be fine for us for the demo and the maximum is 16384 gb storage auto scaling provides dynamic scaling support for your database storage based on your application needs so i don't want to have a storage uh, what do you say uh, auto scaling feature enabled for myself so i'll not select this so if you go ahead and select this you can choose like what the maximum threshold is like what is the maximum threshold it should reach and based on that you can basically choose to have a scaling for yourself but i'm not going to do that so once i've deselected this the options disappear for the free tier we will not get the multi az deployment i hope you remember the usage and the benefits of having a multi az deployment for your amazon aws rds for free tier we will not get this option and the connectivity so either you can connect it to the virtual private cloud that you have to make it like or secluded to your virtual private cloud and uh, either you can create a vpc but uh, i'll use the same default vpc that i have that i have been using since the start and there is one more thing the additional connectivity configuration uh, where you have a subnet group that you can choose by default and uh, there is one thing that you need to remember that we need to access our database publicly or we want to have a public access for the database so so that we can connect to the database and we can use it so what we're going to do we are going to select the yes option here so that we can connect to our database from our local machine i will just move forward with this so vpc security groups is something that uh, is very important for us i would want to create a new vpc security group so i will name it my postgres hyphen sg so i'll name it as uh, my postgres hyphen sg and availability zone i don't have any preference but uh, i can either choose it to be in ap south 1a or south 1b and the database port that you have is by default 5432 and anybody who has already used postgres would already know that the default port for postgres is 5432 so that's fine for us there are three options available for us the database authentication so the first option is password based authentication that we have already provided like uh, the password and the username that i gave and you can as well connect it via the iam database authentication where you have provided access to this database to some of the iam users and based on that you can also have access to this database and password and kerberos authentication so choose a directory in which you want to allow authorized users to access or authenticate with this database instance using kerberos you can do this as well but for now we are going to move forward with password authentication and the additional configuration that we have here is the database option the initial database name that we want so let's suppose you want to create a database by default once the uh, rds database spins off you can just give it a database name for yourself so i'll give like uh, demo db so demo database is the name of the database that will spin up after the rds database has been configured so this is fine for us so the db parameter group that i have is default postgres 11 so this is by default i am not going to change it and ba backups so create a point in time snapshot of your backup and you can enable automatic backup and there is a backup retention as well and uh, the backup retention period is like the number of days that you want your backups to be retained so this is configured to seven days and you can go up to 35 days as well 
so after that there are options available for us to create a backup window like uh, there is no preference means it will do it automatically or you can select a particular window between what time period you want and what is the duration of the time that you have and copy text to snapshot option will be available to us but i will not have a select window option selected so i'll go with the non no preference one so the default retention period of your performance insight is also seven days that can be increased to a long-term retention period of two years so this is also a very good option that we have the master key the default aws rds key that i have that i can use it or i can enter an arn but i don't have an arn right now so i'll just click on this one so what it says here is you cannot change the master kms key after your performance insights have been enabled now, this is something pretty much that we must be aware of and monitoring i don't want to enable any monitoring right now or log export for any of those post sql or upgrade uh, logs so if you have a cloudwatch monitoring in place then you can assign an im role to it so that it can be pushed or the logs can be published to that cloudwatch log feature uh, that we don't have here and maintenance enable auto minor version upgrades so this is one of the best features that you are going to get with rds because it is auto managed or it is managed by aws itself so once you click on this enable auto minor upgrade this will be automatically upgraded so you can select for this maintenance window also you can select a window in which you want to do the maintenance otherwise if you click on no preference it will do it as per the recommended aws maintenance upgrades so it will do it in that way and uh, so this is one of the best features that we have because we don't want to have the headache of updating our infrastructure and as this is aws managed and they will be doing it for us and the next option that we have here is deletion protection so if you click on this or select this option the enable delete protection so what happens is it protects the database from being deleted accidentally while the option is enabled you cannot delete the database so i can choose this not a problem so i can have this enabled so so the monthly estimated cost that we have here the estimated monthly cost that uh, amazon provides us is like the so the aws rds tier is available to you for 12 months and each calendar month the free tier will allow you to use the amazon rds resource list so it's like 750 hours of amazon rds in single az db.t2.micro instance that we chose and 20 gb of general purpose ssd that is the general purpose storage so we have used that as well and 20 gb of automated backup storage for any uninitiated user initiated db snapshot so uh, you can uh, use these options in the free tier and if you exceed any of these then you will be charged so don't worry about uh, this right now if you don't want to spend money on this you can just watch the tutorial so that you get the information without spending the money and that's how youtube works right so <laughs> yeah it's good just go ahead and click on create database okay so this is one more thing you cannot provide a master username as admin because it is a reserved keyword so this is something that good that we got to know here so i'll change it i'll make it pythonic okay so i think this should work so now that everything is done you can just go ahead and create database let's wait for it it might take some time so as you can see it's already written that your database might take a few minutes to launch so we can wait for that and you can also grab some coffee or tea meanwhile your database will be ready i'll wait for the time and i'll come back again so now as you can see the status has changed from creating to backing up and the cpu percentage also has been shown here and we'll wait for some more time so now uh, postgres instance or the rds instance is available to us that's a very good thing congratulations on your first rds database so once you have created your database you can just click on this one okay and before that i just want to go back and i want to uh, check all the identifiers that we already have here so this is the db identifier that we gave like my postgres db that's the name that i gave and the role is instance the engine type is postgres sql and it is currently placed in ap south 1b and the size of the database that you have the instance size is db.t2.micro that is the p no, what do you say there is the one that is available to us in the free tier one and the status fortunately is available right now the so the current cpu utilization is at 7.61 percent the current activity has zero sessions maintenance is none the vpc that is the default vpc that we have and multi-az 
as we can't have multi AZ in free tier that will be no here so you can go ahead and click on this one and it is one thing to create a database or create an ideas database and uh, the important thing after this is to connect to that endpoint and make use of it isn't it so connectivity and security that you see here the endpoint or the port that you have here is this is the endpoint that you want to connect so let's suppose you have created your database locally then you might use 127.0.0.1 and you connect it to 5432 isn't it or a local host then 5432 or any if you have it any in a server then you use that ip address of the server and connect to that particular port to access the database here uh, we have got the endpoint url for us so this is pretty much it and what we are going to do is we are going to just go ahead and uh, copy this and we'll go back to the pg admin and these are servers that you see here right server option so here once you are in pg admin what you're going to do is you right click on this and create a server and basically what we need is we want to give it a name for the server that we have created here so this is basically to have an interaction point in pg admin for our database that we have created or the ids database that we have created so you can give it any name there's no constraint on whatever name that you have given for the ids database you can name it anything that you want for your own identification so i will give it like um, RDS database the next thing that i want is to add the correction details here paste the host name that i already had the maintenance database i hope you remember the database name that you gave so i gave it demo db and uh, the username was uh, pythonholic and the password was password <laughs> sorry so i can just go ahead and save this password as well and if there are any sl configuration that you have configured for the database you can use it or if you are connecting it through the sh uh, tunnel or a bastion host or jump server that you can provide this information here and the advanced option also are available to you and this is pretty much a very good tool like pg admin gives you a lot of options to connect to your postgres instance and once you have configured all these operations or the options that you have then you can just go ahead and click on save so once you have clicked on save that's it it'll give you all the options now so now we have our demo db in place right now and uh, that's it this is, we have connected to the database instance that we have for rds and one more important thing that you need to remember is like uh, once you click on this um, option that you have and go to actions there you see all the options that are available to you that you can perform on the database that you have created the aws rds database that you have created so either you can stop it you can reboot it you can delete it you can create read replica so i hope you remember the tutorial that we had for aws rds where we discussed in length about the read replicas so you can create read replicas as well from here take a snapshot and restore it to the point in time that you had created the snapshot so this is pretty much everything that uh, the options that are available to you for our AWS RDS database. Let's move on. And feel free to create your own RDS database in the free tier account. And it's pretty simple and uh, you can learn a lot of things from there itself. So if you have any doubts related to this or if you have any errors that you're getting on this uh, creation process, then please uh, put that in the comments and we can discuss in our one-on-one uh, -on -one session that we are planning to have so i'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one session on saturdays or probably weekends so that we can sort out all the errors that you're getting or if you have any questions that you want you can put it across in the comments list as well so that we can uh, sort it out so this was something that i really wanted to share with you guys so if you liked please share and subscribe and uh, that's it have a good day thank you Bye bye